Um, okay, ladder, like this. Okay, if that ladder falls, can you see it pivoting? How? What does it rotate around? Do you see it kind of rotates around the bottom like this? Right? Boom. Right? So, I mean, if you move with it, it would look like it's rot like the hand of a clock. So I'm going to make that the pivot. Now, let's do the forces. What are the forces? Give me a force. Gravity. Where does that come up? The middle. Does this problem have a guy on it? Yeah. Is the ladder weightless or does it have mass? They don't tell us. It says it's a very light ladder. Oh, that means the ladder is weightless. He's got some weight, so then we can put that here. That's the force of the guy. Okay, what else? Give me some other forces. Friction. Which way does friction point left, right, up, down? And which way are we talking about? You're talking about up here? At the bottom, down here? What's that? I think it says the wall is what? Did they say the wall is frictionless? Yeah, there you go. So here, mu is zero. But down here, which way does friction point? Left, right, up, down. Ask yourself, which way is the ladder trying to move? To the left. So which way is friction? To the right. That's F sub F. Now, up here, is there a force up here? If there was no force up here, how come this isn't falling? And pushing it through the wall. Is there a surface? And whenever there's a surface, there is Fn. I'm going to call this Fw for force of the wall, because there is another Fn down here. Now, do you see why it was a really good idea to pick the bottom of the ladder as a pivot? Yeah, it cancels out two. Okay, and that is a great thing. And so remember, because of some of the forces, I'm going to say Fw is equal to Ff. And I'm going to say Fn is equal to Fg. So this was the sum of the forces in the x was 0. This is the sum of the forces in the y was 0. Because if it's not moving, that must be true, right? Well, I can't figure anything out yet, so I have to go to... Yeah. Sum of the torque. The sum of the torque is going to be 0. Okay, so now, what are the only two torques? Yeah, the torque of the wall, well, of the wall and that's going to equal the torque of the guy. Right? The torque caused by the guy trying to pull the ladder down, and the torque by the wall pushing the ladder back up. Those are the only two torques. And then I have to crack those vectors, because do you see that those vectors make an angle? And if that's theta, then that one's theta. <coughs> which means if I break this vector like this, that means this is theta. So this is going to be mg cos theta. This is going to be mg sine theta. Now up here, I can crack this like this. And this is going to be fw cos theta. And this is going to be fw sine theta. So then, what is the torque of the wall? The torque of the wall is Fw sine theta times the length of the ladder. And then the other one, the torque of the guy, is going to be mg cos theta. Are we supposed to find d, how far you can go up? Okay, times d. And this is d. So then D is going to equal Fw sine theta L over Mg cos theta. And what is Fw? It turns out to be F sub F. So we can say that's F sub F. And then what is F sub F? F sub N. Mu F sub G, which is going to be mu Mg. So I can take that, substitute in there, and I get mu mg sine theta L over mg cos theta. 
mg's cancel, and I get mu l tan theta. Oh no, that was mu is zero for. Could you set a ladder on ice and use it safely? And maybe if it had these big nails or something, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Sorry. Mu. Sorry, but this was supposed to be elbows. We have that determines how we have a winner.